Dwayne Johnson. Dwayne Douglas Johnson, also known by his ring name, The Rock, is an American actor, producer, and professional wrestler. He holds both American and Canadian citizenships. Born in California, and raised in New Zealand and the U.S. states of Hawaii and Pennsylvania, Johnson was a college football player for the University of Miami, where he won a national championship on the 1991 Miami Hurricanes football team. He later played for the Calgary Stampeders in the Canadian Football League, and was cut two months into the 1995 season. This led him to become a professional wrestler like his grandfather, Peter Maivia, and his father, Rocky Johnson, from whom he also inherited his Canadian citizenship. Currently signed to WWE on a part-time contract, Johnson gained mainstream fame in the World Wrestling Federation from 1996 to 2004 as a major figure in the company's Attitude Era and was the first third-generation wrestler in the company's history. He returned to wrestling part-time for WWE from 2011 to 2013, and continues to make sporadic non-wrestling appearances for the company. Johnson has 17 championship reigns in WWE, including 10 as a world champion, winning the WWF, WWE Championship eight times and the WCW World Championship twice. He won the WWF Intercontinental Championship twice and the WWF Tag Team Championship five times. Johnson is the sixth Triple Crown Champion in WWE history and won the 2000 Royal Rumble. He is widely regarded as one of the greatest professional wrestlers of all time. Johnson's autobiography The Rock Says, co-written with Joe Layden, was published in 2000. It debuted at number one on the New York Times bestseller list, spent 20 weeks on the New York Times bestseller list, and sold 720,000 copies in hardcover alone. Johnson's first leading film role was in The Scorpion King in 2002. For this role, he was paid $5.5 million, a world record for an actor in his first starring role. He has since appeared in various films, and become known for his ability to reinvigorate film franchises. One of his more prominent roles is Luke Hobbs in the Fast and the Furious franchise. Its most recent film, The Fate of the Furious, was released in 2017 and has grossed over $1.1 billion worldwide, making it the second highest grossing film of 2017 and the 12th highest grossing film of all time. He hosted and produced The Hero, a reality competition series, and has since continued to produce TV series and films through his production company Seven Bucks Productions, each of which he also stars in. Forbes listed Johnson number 25 in the top 100 most powerful celebrities in 2013. He was the world's highest paid actor of 2016. Time named him one of the 100 most influential people in the world in 2016. In 2015, Muscle and Fitness named Johnson their Man of the Century. Early Life Johnson was born in Haywood, California, the son of Arthur Johnson and professional wrestler Rocky Johnson, who was born Wade Douglas Bowles. His maternal grandfather, High Chief Peter Maivia, was also a wrestler. His maternal grandmother, Leah Maivia, was one of wrestling's few female promoters, taking over Polynesian Pacific Pro Wrestling after her husband's death in 1982, until 1988. Johnson's father, who is Canadian, is a black Nova Scotian, and his mother is of Samoan heritage. His father was a part of the first black tag team to win the World Tag Team Championship in the World Wrestling Federation. Through his mother, he is considered a non-blood relative of the Anuri wrestling family. His cousin, Savalina Fanin, is also a wrestler currently working for WWE. Johnson briefly lived in the suburb of Graylin in Auckland, New Zealand, 
with his mother's family. He attended Richmond Road Primary School. Before returning to the United States with his parents, he spent 10th grade at President William McKinley High School in Honolulu, Hawaii. As he entered 11th grade, his father's job required his relocation to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, where Dwayne began playing football at Freedom High School in the East Penn Conference. He was also a member of the school's track and field and wrestling teams. Johnson was a promising football prospect and received offers from many Division I collegiate programs. He decided on a full scholarship from the University of Miami, playing defensive tackle. In 1991, he was on the Miami Hurricanes national championship team. When an injury sidelined him, he was replaced by future National Football League star Warren Sapp. While attending Miami, Johnson met his future wife, Danny Garcia, who graduated from the university in 1992 and later became a member of its board of trustees. She also founded a Miami-based wealth management firm. In 2006, the couple donated $2 million to build a living room at the university's Newman Alumni Center. Johnson graduated from Miami in 1995 with a Bachelor of General Studies degree in Criminology and Physiology. He joined the Calgary Stampeders of the Canadian Football League in 1995. He was on the practice roster as a backup linebacker, but was cut two months into the season. On November 10, 2007, Johnson returned to the Miami Orange Bowl to participate in the festivities surrounding the University of Miami's last home football game at the stadium. Training like his father and grandfather, several of Johnson's other relatives are or were professional wrestlers, including his uncles, AFA and C. Kavana Rai and his cousins, Rodney, Solofa, Matt and Eddie. When Johnson declared his intent to become a wrestler, his father initially resisted, but then agreed to train him himself, warning that he would not go easy on him. Veteran wrestler Pat Patterson got Johnson several tryout matches with the World Wrestling Federation in 1996. Under his real name, he defeated the Brooklyn Brawler at a house show and lost the other matches to Chris Candido and Owen Hart. After wrestling at Jerry Lawler's United States Wrestling Association as Flex Cavana, and winning the USWA World Tag Team Championship twice with Bart Sawyer in the summer of 1996. Johnson signed a WWF contract. He received additional training from Tom Pritchard, alongside Arkham Malbrecht and Mark Henry. Rocky Maivia Johnson made his WWF debut as Rocky Maivia, a combination of his father, and grandfather's ring names, although his real name was acknowledged by the announcers. He was initially reluctant to take this ring name, but was persuaded by Vince McMahon and Jim Ross. He was given the nickname, The Blue Chipper and his lineage was played too on TV, where he was hyped as the WWF's first third-generation wrestler. Maivia, a clean-cut face character, was pushed heavily from the start despite his wrestling inexperience. He debuted on Monday Night Raw as a member of Mark Maros' entourage on November 4, 1996, and had his first match at Survivor Series on November 17, in an eight-man elimination tag match. He was the sole survivor by single-handedly eliminating Crush and Goldust. WWF fans generally rejected him because of his cheesy character. On February 13, 1997, he won the Intercontinental Championship from Hunter Hearst Helmsley on Monday Night Raw. Maivia successfully defended the title at In Your House 13, Final Four against Hunter Hearst Helmsley and at WrestleMania 13 against The Sultan. He defeated Bret Hart by disqualification in a title defense on March 31st episode of Raw is War. On April 20th, 
At In Your House, 14, Revenge of the Taker, he lost to Savio Vega by countout, retaining the title. For the final time, audiences became increasingly hostile toward Maivia, with chants of, Die! Rocky, die, and, Rocky sucks, being heard during his matches. The Nation of Domination After losing the Intercontinental Championship to Owen Hart on the April 28, 1997 episode of Raw is War and suffering a legitimate knee injury in a match against Mankind. Maivia returned in August 1997 and turned heel by joining Farouk, D.L.O. Brown, and Karma in the stable called the Nation of Domination. During this time, he refused to acknowledge the Rocky Maivia name, instead referring to himself in the third person as The Rock. He insulted the audience in his promos, as well as WWF television interviewers once calling Kevin Kelly an ugly hermaphrodite at D-Generation X in your house. Stone Cold Steve Austin defeated The Rock in under six minutes to retain the Intercontinental Championship. The next night on Raw is War, Austin was ordered by Mr. McMahon to defend the title in a rematch, but forfeited it to The Rock instead, handing him the title belt before hitting him with the Stone Cold Stunner. The Rock feuded with Austin and Ken Shamrock through the end of 1997 and beginning of 1998. On the March 30th episode of Raw is War, The Rock debuted a new Intercontinental Championship belt which was used to represent the title until October 2, 2011, when the previous design was reused. Later that night, he overthrew Farouk as leader of the Nation of Domination, sparking a feud. He successfully defended the Intercontinental title against Farouk at Over the Edge in your house on May 31, 1998. He and the nation then feuded with Triple H and D-Generation X. The two stable leaders first met in the quarterfinal of the 1998 King of the Ring tournament, which Rock won. At King of the Ring, Rock defeated Dan Seven in the semi-final match and lost to rival Ken Shamrock in the final. Rock then resumed his feud with Triple H, as the two had a two out of three falls match at Fully Loaded, in your house, for the Intercontinental title, which The Rock retained in controversial fashion. This led to a ladder match at SummerSlam, in which Triple H won the title. At Breakdown, in your house, The Rock defeated Ken Shamrock and Mankind in a triple threat steel cage match to become the number one contender for the WWF Championship. He then feuded with fellow Nation member Mark Henry, effectively breaking up the stable. The Corporation The Rock feuded with Stone Cold Steve Austin and stole Austin's personalized WWF Championship, the Smoking Skull Belt. The Rock's entertaining promos and ensuing popularity led to a face turn, in which he called himself, the People's Champion. This led to a feud with Mr. McMahon, who said he had, a problem with the people, and would thus target, the People's Champion. A double turn occurred at Survivor Series, when The Rock defeated McMahon's associate, Mankind, in the finals of the, Deadly Game, Tournament for the vacant WWF Championship in a fashion reminiscent of the Montreal screw job, The Rock allied with Vince and Shane McMahon as the crown jewel of their stable, The Corporation. On December 13, 1998, at the pay-per-view named for him, Rock Bottom, in your house, The Rock had a rematch with Mankind for the WWF Championship. Mankind appeared to win the match when The Rock passed out in the Mandible Claw submission move, but Mr. McMahon ruled that, since The Rock did not tap out, he retained his title. The Rock continued to feud with Mankind over the WWF Championship, which was traded back and forth between them. First, in the main event of the January 4, 1999 episode of Raw is War, 
Mankind defeated The Rock after interference from Stone Cold Steve Austin. Then, in an I Quit match at Royal Rumble on January 24, The Rock regained the title. When a recording of Mankind saying, I quit, from an earlier interview was played over the PA system. On halftime heat on January 31, Mankind pinned The Rock using a forklift truck in an empty arena match. The two faced off again at Super Valentine's Day Massacre in your house in a last man standing match which ended in a draw, meaning Mankind retained the title. Their feud ended on February 15, Raw is War, when The Rock won his third WWF Championship in a ladder match after Big Show performed a choke slam on Mankind off the ladder. The Rock lost the WWF Championship to Stone Cold Steve Austin at WrestleMania 15. He also lost the title rematch at Backlash in your house. Though he was a heel, his amusing verbal skills led many fans to cheer The Rock. He turned face again after Shane McMahon betrayed him and began a feud with Triple H, The Undertaker and the Corporate Ministry. He defeated Triple H at Over the Edge, then lost to WWF Champion The Undertaker at King of the Ring. He lost a number one contenders match to Triple H at Fully Loaded, after interference from Mr. Ass. This sparked a feud with Mr. Ass, culminating in a Kiss My Ass match at SummerSlam, which The Rock won. The People's Champion Toward the latter part of 1999, The Rock had several singles and tag team championship opportunities. He teamed with former enemy Mankind as The Rock and Sock Connection. After he challenged WWF Tag Team Champions The Undertaker and Big Show, and Mankind offered his help. They won the title for the first of three times. The two performed numerous comedic skits together, including one on Raw is War called This Is Your Life, in which Mankind produced people from The Rock's past such as his high school girlfriend and his high school football coach. The segment earned an 8.4 Nielsen rating, one of the highest ratings ever for a Raw segment. At Royal Rumble on January 23, 2000, The Rock entered the Royal Rumble match and was one of the final two remaining, along with Big Show, Show seemingly intended to throw The Rock over the top rope in a running power slam-like position. But Rock counted the move on the ring apron sending Big Show to the floor before re-entering the ring as the winner. However, The Rock's feet hit the floor first, although those watching the event on TV did not see that, until Big Show proved this with additional video footage, and claimed to be the rightful winner. Despite this proof, the original decision could not be reversed, so a number one contenders match for the WWF Championship was held at No Way Out, which Big Show won after Shane McMahon interfered and hit The Rock in the head with a steel chair as he attempted to execute a people's elbow. The Rock defeated Big Show on March 13th episode of Raw is War to regain the right to face the WWF Champion, Triple H, at WrestleMania 2000 in a fatal four-way elimination match also including Big Show and Mick Foley. Each wrestler had a McMahon in his corner. Triple H had his wife, Stephanie, Foley had Linda, The Rock had Vince and Big Show had Shane. Triple H retained the title after Vince betrayed The Rock by hitting him with a chair. Over the next few months, The Rock feuded with Triple H over the WWF Championship. On April 30, at Backlash, The Rock defeated Triple H for his fourth WWF Championship reign, after Steve Austin intervened on The Rock's behalf. On May 21, at Judgment Day, the two had an Iron Man match with Shawn Michaels as the special guest referee, with the score tied at five falls each, and with seconds left on the time limit. The Rock was disqualified when The Undertaker attacked Triple H, giving Triple H the 6-5 win and the title. The next night on Raw is War, The Rock got his revenge, 
taking out the entire McMahon-Helmsley faction with The Undertaker's help. He won the WWF Championship for a fifth time at King of the Ring on June 25th by scoring the winning pin in a tag team match, teamed with Kane and The Undertaker against Vince McMahon, Shane McMahon, and Triple H. He successfully defended the championship against Chris Benoit at Fully Loaded, Kurt Angle, and Triple H at SummerSlam, and Benoit, Kane, and The Undertaker at Unforgiven. The Rock lost the WWF Championship to Angle at No Mercy in October. Around this time, he feuded with Rikishi and defeated him at Survivor Series. He wrestled a six-man Hell in a Cell match for the WWF Championship at Armageddon, which Kurt Angle won to retain the title. On December 18 on Raw, The Rock won the WWF Tag Team Championship with The Undertaker, defeating Edge and Christian, then losing it back to them the next night at a SmackDown taping. In 2001, The Rock continued to feud with Angle over the WWF Championship, culminating at No Way Out in February, where he pinned Angle to win the WWF Championship for a sixth time. He then feuded with the Royal Rumble winner, Stone Cold Steve Austin, whom The Rock lost the title at WrestleMania X7 after Austin allied with Mr. McMahon, who interfered on his behalf. On the next night's Raw is War, during a steel cage title rematch, Triple H came to the ring with a sledgehammer and it seemed he would help The Rock because of the rivalry between Austin and Triple H, but he attacked him instead, allying with McMahon and Austin. Austin and Triple H formed a tag team called The Power Trip, while The Rock was indefinitely suspended. Johnson used this time off to act in the movie The Mummy Returns, at ringside. 2001 The Rock returned to the WWF in late July 2001 and had to decide whether to join the WWF or the Alliance during the invasion, eventually siding with the WWF. At SummerSlam, The Rock defeated Booker T to win the WCW Championship. He lost the title to Chris Jericho. At No Mercy, the next night on Raw, he teamed with Jericho to win the WWF Tag Team Championship from the Dudley Boys. 2002 The Rock defeated Jericho on November 5th episode of Raw for his second WCW Championship, which was renamed to World Championship, as part of the WWF's battle against the Alliance. The Rock wrestled in a winner-takes-all, 10-man elimination match at Survivor Series. In the end, it came down to a one-on-one -on -one with Steve Austin. The Rock seemed to have the upper hand, until Jericho entered the ring and attacked The Rock. Austin tried to capitalize on this by pinning The Rock, but Kurt Angle, a Team Alliance member, revealed his true allegiance by hitting Austin in the head with a title belt. The Rock then pinned Austin, forcing the Alliance to disband. The Rock closed out 2001 by losing the World Championship at Vengeance to Chris Jericho, who would unify the WWF and WCW titles later that night. The Rock unsuccessfully challenged Jericho for the now undisputed WWF Championship at Royal Rumble, ending their feud. The Rock defeated The Undertaker at No Way Out. Three weeks before WrestleMania, The Rock headlined WWE's Asian tour to Japan, Singapore and Malaysia. The first show was in Yokohama Arena and had sold 18,000 tickets in 60 minutes. Jericho, who was booked to face him for all three shows, said he brought out the best in him and described his reaction as, one of the loudest I'd ever heard in my career. It was as if Elvis had joined the Beatles and all of them were wearing Godzilla costumes. He then feuded with the New World Order, after challenging Hollywood Hulk Hogan to a match. At WrestleMania X8, the match was billed as Icon vs. Icon, with both men representing the top tier of two generations of wrestling. Ultimately Rock pinned Hogan at WrestleMania X8. After the NWO turned on Hogan, 
for losing the match. The Rock allied with him and was drafted to the SmackDown brand, becoming the first WWF wrestler to be drafted in the WWF Draft Lottery. He then took a short sabbatical from wrestling. Hollywood Gimmick and Departure in 2003 when he returned, The Rock won his then-record-breaking 7th WWF WWE Championship at Vengeance, defeating Kurt Angle and The Undertaker in a triple threat match. He successfully defended the title a global warning in Australia against Triple H and Brock Lesnar. By pinning Triple H after the match, Lesnar attacked The Rock until Triple H saved him. At SummerSlam, after interference from Lesnar's manager Paul Heyman and the use of a steel chair, Rock lost the WWE Championship to Lesnar along with the record for the youngest WWE Champion, which Rock had set in 1998. Following the loss against Lesnar, Rock publicly declared that whether or not the crowd booed him he would always be the people's champion, criticizing the fans in the arena and again taking a sabbatical from wrestling in order to focus on his film career. The Rock returned on January 30, 2003, episode of SmackDown, to publicly criticize Hulk Hogan, and make it clear that, because of the success of his Hollywood career, WWE was no longer a priority. This re-established him as a heel for the first time since 1999. Rock defeated Hogan again at No Way Out and drafted himself to the Raw brand, where he had various feuds, including one with the Hurricane. He also performed rock concerts, segments in which he played the guitar and mocked the show's host city. After failing to win number one contendership for the World Heavyweight Championship, The Rock turned his attention to Steve Austin who, to The Rock's chagrin, had been chosen as superstar of the decade. This led to a match at WrestleMania 19, which called back to their previous two WrestleMania encounters, both of which Austin had won. The Rock won after delivering three consecutive rock bottoms, ending the long-running feud in what turned out to be Austin's final match. The next night, Raw was billed as the Rock Appreciation Night in honor of his victory over Austin. That night, he was attacked by a debuting Goldberg. At Backlash Goldberg defeated The Rock, who then left WWE as an active wrestler to focus on his film career. The Rock then occasionally returned to WWE in non-wrestling roles, gradually turning face again by engaging in one-night feuds against heels such as Chris Jericho and Christian. The Rock aided Mick Foley in his feud against Evolution leading to a reunion of The Rock and Sock Connection. They faced Ric Flair, Randy Orton, and Batista in a handicap match at WrestleMania XX, losing when Orton pinned Foley after the RKO. It turned out to be Rock's last match for the next seven years. The Rock appeared in WWE sporadically following WrestleMania XX. He stood up for Eugene made a cameo in his hometown of Miami and helped Mick Foley turn back LaRay's distance. Later in 2004, he hosted a pie-eating contest as part of the WWE Diva search and ended the segment by giving Jonathan Coachman a spine buster and a people's elbow. After this, he stated in several interviews that he was no longer under contract to WWE. He stated that he would continue using the trademarked name, The Rock, per a dual ownership deal between him and WWE. Sporadic Appearances On August 23, 2004, episode of Raw, The Rock returned and took out Jonathan Coachman and La Resistance. In October 2005, The Rock did a tell-all interview with WWE.com. He talked his contract with WWE, movies and feelings on a dream match with Shawn Michaels. On March 12, 2007, The Rock appeared on a WWE show after nearly three years, via a pre-taped promo shown during Raw. 
He correctly predicted that Bobby Lashley would defeat Umaga at WrestleMania 23 in Donald Trump and Vince McMahon's Battle of the Billionaires match. On March 29, 2008, The Rock inducted his father, Rocky Johnson, and his grandfather, Peter Maivia, into the WWE Hall of Fame. During his induction speech, he roasted wrestlers John Cena, Santino Marella, Chris Jericho, Mick Foley, Shawn Michaels, and Stone Cold Steve Austin. In September 2009, he appeared at a World Extreme Wrestling show to support the pro wrestling debut of Serona Snucker, the daughter of his longtime friend and mentor Jimmy Snucker. On October 2, 2009, the 10 year anniversary of SmackDown, The Rock cut a promo via pre recorded video. Feud with John Cena. On February 14, 2011, episode of Raw, The Rock was revealed as the host of WrestleMania 27, appearing live on Raw for the first time in almost seven years. During a lengthy promo, he addressed the fans, Michael Cole, The Miz and John Cena, calling Cena a big fat bowl of fruity pebbles, inspiring a popular crowd chant and sign. The Rock claimed to love wrestling, having been born into the business, a claim Cena argued. After numerous appearances via satellite, The Rock appeared live on the Raw before WrestleMania 27 to confront Cena, with whom he had been feuding through Twitter, making fun of Cena's clothing, and calling him a homeless Power Ranger and Vanilla Ice. After he and Cena exchanged insults, the Miz and Alex Riley appeared and attacked The Rock, he fended off Miz and Riley, only for Cena to blindside him with an attitude adjustment, one year in advance on April 3rd. At WrestleMania 27, The Rock opened the show by cutting a promo. After appearing in numerous backstage segments, The Rock came to ringside to restart the main event between Cena and the Miz is a no disqualification match after it had ended in a draw as revenge for the attitude adjustment Cena had given him on Raw. Rock hit Cena with the rock bottom, allowing the Miz to pin him and retain the WWE Championship. After the match, Rock attacked Miz and hit him with the people's elbow. The following night on Raw, Cena challenged The Rock to a match at WrestleMania 28 the next year, which Rock accepted. They then worked together to fend off an attack by The Core, which at the time consisted of Wade Barrett, Keith Slater, Justin Gabriel, and Ezekiel Jackson. The Rock appeared live on Raw in his hometown of Miami to celebrate his 39th birthday on September 16. WWE announced The Rock would wrestle in a traditional 5-on-5 five -five Survivor Series tag team match, teaming with Cena at Survivor Series in November. However, on the October 24 episode of Raw, Cena instead chose The Rock to be his partner in a standard tag team match against Awesome Truth, which Rock which agreed to the following week via satellite. On November 14, during the special Raw Gets Rocked, The Rock appeared live, delivering rock bottoms to Mick Foley, who had been hosting a This Is Your Life style segment for Cena, and later both members of Awesome Truth. Despite their rivalry, The Rock and Cena defeated Awesome Truth on November 20 at Survivor Series, when The Rock pinned The Miz with the people's elbow. After the match, The Rock gave Cena a rock bottom. Leading up to WrestleMania, The Rock and Cena had several verbal confrontations on Raw. On March 12, 2012, episode, The Rock hosted his first rock concert segment since 2004, mocking Cena in his songs. He opined that, having beaten Hulk Hogan and Stone Cold Steve Austin at previous WrestleManias, beating Cena would make him the greatest wrestler of all time. On April 1 at WrestleMania 28, The Rock faced Cena in the main event hyped for a year, and billed with the tagline, Once in a Lifetime, 
When an overconfident Cena attempted the people's elbow on the rock, he countered with a rock bottom for the pin and the win. The following night on Raw, The Rock praised Cena for putting up a good fight, calling their match an honor. He then vowed to once again become WWE Champion. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.